Mm. Hope I'm live. <laughs> Let me uh, get this set. Apologize. Just getting some things set up. Checking in with the fam before we start the class. And uh, we're going to be making some art today. Crazy. Ah! Pepper's here. Ah! Come here. Want to say hi to everybody? I apologize if his bark's pretty loud. This is Pepper. Oh, sniff the microphone. This is Pepper. He, we call him Doodle because. Oh, he's a teeny What? No, he's fine. You sure? Yeah, he's fine. Oh, thank you. Aw. <laughs> that was Maria. She's my fiance. I want to miss, fix my squiggle there in the front. My squiggy. Um, this is Pepper, and he's addicted to Maria, <laughs> as am I, and uh, he loves to be with Maria. Pepper, say hi to the school. Okay, so it says in the thing, <laughs> hold on, let me close this. Um, it says in the video, right? Okay, let me let me introduce myself. My name is Mr. Mick, and I, or Brian McAndrews, and I'm an art teacher at Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy in Camden, New Jersey. It is a creative arts middle school and high school. Um, we have all of the various arts at that school, as a little plug for the school. If you happen to find yourself in middle or high school in Camden, New Jersey, and want to study one of the arts like dance or, or singing or instruments or strings, um, we offer that. But if not, and you want to do some art with me, then here we are. <laughs> and uh, so here's my, so you can join my Google Classroom. Um, I'm doing a class per day, and I do on various, um, I teach the, uh, a drawing, a pro, an approach to drawing, which is based on the seven elements of perspective. And uh, I, I learned the seven elements of perspective from a guy named Bruce McIntyre, wrote from his book, that uh, I was studying uh, animation. Oh, my camera crashed there, I apologize. That's how I, I get my webcam, is through a, an old Android phone. Um, and I was studying animation, and, I, and the animator, uh, well, the animation book I was studying was called Drawn to Life by Walt Stanchfield. And he kept referencing Bruce McIntyre and the elements perspective and i was like finally what i kept doing and this i don't know if you've ever done this with art um but it's a great way to do anything is that you get interested in something like animation and then you get a bunch of books and videos on animation like the the work of um richard williams the um the animator survival kit is one that i was working through and then i, f I found clips of his videos online where he was teaching master classes to people at pixar and disney and uh, he was a great resource. Walt Stanchfield, Drawn to Life. So this was for animation. So I started pulling these threads of animation. At one point, I was really into figure drawing. Um, a little bit later, and I was looking at Glenn Vilpu, and I was looking at Frank Riley. Um, uh, Pro What's his name? Proko, the YouTube streamer. Um, his work on uh, YouTube on, on studying the figure. So um, hopefully that's how you landed here, is that you are really interested in drawing. And so I came across the drawing textbook, and it, and it talks about, oh, I'm gonna put him over here. Ah! I might put him on the ground if he doesn't chill. Ah! Ah! Okay, he wants to be on the ground. Probably gonna run in the stairs and look up the stairs. Pepper do, Pepper Doodle Bacharanian, <coughs> McAndrews. That's his whole name. Um, so I forget what I was talking about. Probably the elements of perspective. Going. Pepper, come here. Let me get him again. I'm sorry. Come here. I think if he stays with me for this time being, part of it is he hears people moving upstairs and stuff. Um, actually, I think I can just flick on my mouth on the, his breath, as my students would say, it's hot. <laughs> hot breath. Ooh. Um, 
So uh, the elements perspective, and when I came across these elements perspective in this drawing textbook, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's linked in the YouTube video below. If not, I will link it down below um, to uh, Bruce McIntyre's um, website. I believe, I think his son Kevin might be running things. I have no idea. Um, but, uh, so the seven elements of perspective. And in my previous videos, starting, this is class 10, I believe, if you go back to class number one and up through all of the first nine, I, I go through these seven elements of perspective and spend a bit of time in each class talking about those and the importance of those. Um, and what I was thinking we would do today is we would work on one of the examples um, uh, but I'm going to use the 3DS to do my drawing uh, because um, uh, I think it's really interesting all of these gaming things like the 3DS. I have right here a Vita as well. It's got the same program I'm going to use called Colors. So if you happen to be using a Vita, I'll probably do a class tomorrow. Look, he just tucked his head right into my arm. I swear I'm not sitting here with a Pomeranian because it's like clickbait, although it could be clickbait, right? I mean, look at this guy. He's just so cute. <laughs> he likes to go to art school. Don't you, Pepper? You like to be an artist. He just, his thing is he just wants to be with you. You know, wherever you are, that's where he wants to be. Um, he's, we have another, another Pomeranian, Jack. Jack, um, Jack likes to be, uh, well, with Maria, around Maria, but he also, he's not a big, like, on your lap, kind of, I want to sit on your lap. You know, he'll let you scratch his, he wants you to scratch his belly. And then once you're done, just going to be scratching him all the time. Oh, Pepper, it's not that into it. Um, he is going to take off and do his own thing. That's just the way Jack is. Jack is more independent. Pepper is some is a dog that wants to be on your lap or wants to be near you and with you. And he's not quite happy if he's not. Um, he prefers to be with Maria and not with me. Uh, well, it's not that he doesn't, doesn't, doesn't not want to be with me uh, he just um, prefers her over me um, I also um, Maria has this way of he can just be on her lap and she can still work at the same time like you see him just kind of just falling asleep um, I, I don't you know I, I don't find it that easy maybe I could I could do work here with him here um, but I want to what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the drawing example here that we're gonna do and then I'm going to work on the 3DS. And then you can follow along with your 3DS. You can follow along on pe pencil and paper. Um. All right. You're going to have to chill out. <coughs> chill out, little bro. <laughs> no. Shh, sit. Um, <coughs> I think he's basically saying, Maria, Maria, Maria. I get it. Okay, I'm gonna hit record and then I'm gonna hit pause. I'm using a uh, phone camera actually. An old, um, I'm like really, no, it's not that old. It's a Galaxy Note 4. I actually got it on uh, on eBay because it's a phone that doesn't have the phone part. It was like in a display in a Staples and the person was selling it. Um, it's basically like a, a glorified iPod kind of a deal. He does that spin. Okay, you can't see. He does that spin, and then he's gonna lay down. I'm really, so, I'm really sorry. He's barking so loud. Um, okay, I'm gonna get. Uh, I need the iPad for the reference example. some tea see he knows Maria's up and around I, I apologize for all the doggy barks I'm gonna put a warning in this video <laughs> wow I drank that too fast I really like where, where we are we have this place called ShopRite it's kind of like an Acme or a Super Fresh or I don't know the names of all the different uh, He's laying down. 
and gave up. <laughs> Just resigned himself to sleep. Um, so here is the example we're going to work from. And let me turn my 3DS on. Thanks, Kay. We're good. My daughter offered to keep an eye on him. Um, now, there's no... No, you're fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to laugh at your pain. I'm not, I'm not laughing at your pain. You know, I, w I should be using... I wish I could use... Um, uh, I'm going to do new painting, my paintings new painting and I'm going to do well best fit I guess is that the best <coughs> fit yeah that works okay and all right so this is the example I'm going to use and actually what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that example up on the screen here because uh, I'm going to try to zoom in on this much more closely so this is live <laughs> and we're this is this is less than 35 for McIntyre and I know like we were on less than like five uh, I, actually I'm gonna look at my shirt it's cool cuphead if you can see that it's a game I have not beat but I like it you want this Boom. don't really chew on it that much um, let's see, lesson 35. Now, this is a live art class. Uh, it's not as polished. I've been thinking about recording the video separately. And then... Uh, this guy can't take him anywhere. Hey! Bring him upstairs. I'll be right back. Oh. Leave him on the ground and see what he does. He likes to stand at the bottom of the stairs and look at people. Look up the stairs. Okay, here's the example. Nope, didn't mean to go there. I'm going to copy this. Her fan are you okay there we go here's the example we're working from and I'm gonna make this bigger Boop. there we go all right and I might zoom in a little bit okay. Let me clean my space up here a little bit. I would like to bring the whole camera down lower. <laughs> so the zoom. Okay. You got him? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, here we go. All right, so. We worked on this example before, right? So that's kind of why I wanted, I like the idea of working on this is because uh, this is something we worked on. I hope my head doesn't get in the way too much. <laughs> Let's see, is this? No, that doesn't, that, that doesn't, I need, I need, there, there, there we go, okay. So this screen is, whenever I make a mark here, it shows up there. The benefit is, is I zoom in. So this program I'm using is called Colors. I do not think it's free. I think it's going to cost you some money. But uh, you could just as well work in a program like Sketchbook on the... Uh, if you want to join a Google Classroom to share your artwork with me, uh, that would be cool. I'm going to do that. So there's no... There was a bright... Oh, man, it's so much easier. I had this bright glare from this other... Um, from this other light, like, right in my face. And I'm like, why is it so hard to work on this? <laughs> 
All right, I can see the phone is lagged a bit. All right, so I need to think about where things are going to be placed. But we practiced this example of the um, uh, the UFO before, right? So um, I'm going to switch my stylus over here. This is just a uh, a bigger stylus than. Well, let me use this one. Just so if this is the kind of thing you're using too, then it's similar. But you can also use um, mechanical pencils. Uh, they make good styluses. You just put the lead all the way in, right? So it's just the plastic tip. Um, it's funny on here. It looks like there's something there. Oh, that's layers. I don't want to do that. But there's nothing there. I wonder if that's a dot. No. <laughs> Maybe they're dead pixels on my laptop screen. Um, that cheap shop right green, green tea is so good. Okay, so I kept my my um as like a light blue. I've lowered the opacity of of my um. Uh, brush there and I'm first thing I'm going to do so if you notice the if we just started with lines and we kind of put a line across here across there this this mouse is just the worst okay across here here and then here so notice that this one and this one are kind of tilted like this and then that other one's tilted like that um, also there's on this so if you are drawing on a big piece of paper in your sketchbook you know you might want to think about and maybe I'll draw one in here quickly first that's one thing I like about the Vita version is that you can actually zoom exactly where you want let me let me draw a little frame That's just to say that at, when you're drawing on a piece of paper, draw a frame in there as well for yourself. Uh, if it's a big piece of paper, a small piece of paper, the frame of the paper, the edges of the paper are the frame, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so we're saying one's going like that, tilted that way. One's kind of going this way, tilted back that way. One's tilted that way. And I didn't do that, do this... I didn't do this kind of thing this morning when I worked on it. But think about, um, I mean, we could just foreshorten. There's that one. Here's the other. And the third one's back here like this, right? Um, and I might take my eraser tool Just to lighten this up. Why am I doing this on the 3DS? Mr. Mick, why are you doing this on the 3DS? Well, I'm doing this on the 3DS because I like the 3DS. Okay. Yes, I do. I like the 3DS. I like games. I like video games. I also really like making art with weird pieces of technology. My neck's a little sore, if you can't tell. I'm like, nah, har. <laughs> I uh, also crack myself up. Um, but, uh, and I'm just getting that, that first one placed a little bit better. Than, now I also realize as I've drawn it, I'm like, wow, this is so big that the top of that's gonna come off the page. So I'm gonna actually lighten it up again. <laughs> Use my eraser tool. I'm just, I'm in this planning phase of things. And it really can be, just to start off, like I'm, I'm, I'm saying, okay, this UFO is there, this UFO is there, this UFO is gonna be somewhere here. I've made it too big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. Because this program, while it does have layers, does not have the ability to resize layers. So if you're working on sketchbook or something on the on your um, phone, you could take 
draw each UFO in a different layer and then resize them. But this program doesn't have that ability. Uh, so I am just making sure that I get the right start. So it just means that when you don't have things like layers and you can reorganize things um, <clears throat> in your program, or even if you're working on pencil and paper, you might not have this stuff. Uh, you just need to spend more time in the earlier part where you're planning things out. It doesn't mean one's better than the other. It doesn't mean you need to go get a 3DS. It doesn't mean you need to get an iPad. It doesn't mean you need to get a phone. You can just be pencil and paper. Um, but... Uh, just know that, and you can be working on pencil and paper right now. You don't have to be working digitally. Um, I just wanted to work on the 3DS today. I just thought this would be kind of cool to make some art on the 3DS. Lots of people are home right now, and they might not realize that this gaming console that they have is a really great art tool. I think tomorrow I'm going to use the Vita, because the Vita is a really cool art tool, too. And you can play some games and make some art. Um, I don't think you can do your essays or math homework on here <laughs> but you can definitely do your art homework if your art teacher would allow it I would allow it um, and if you want to join my art class <laughs> um, feel free so I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller um, because I need to be able to place the top of this. It's look at this one foreshortened circle and this this stylus. I'm sorry, but you know there are there are such things as like you know I can say to myself, well the um the pro, you know, the the issue I'm having uh, what what am I what am I getting at here? I'm getting at sometimes, and maybe I'm talking to myself and not necessarily talking to you as a student. I'm talking to myself as a person. Um, is that I um, sometimes feel like, and I don't know if this happens to any of you, but I sometimes feel like I need a new thing in order to be better at whatever it is I like. So I need the new sketchbook. I need the new pencil. I need the new stylus. I need the new iPad. I have been very tempted by those new iPads. Uh, I have an iPad Pro, um, which I like. It's great. Um, but... Uh, do I need the new one? No, I don't need the new one. But I've, I, I sometimes can convince myself that I do. And then I try to convince my fiancé. Look at you. And she's pretty hard to convince. Sometimes she agrees with me. And the other thing I like about this um, app so much is that these holding these buttons to move around and to undo stuff and to zoom in and out I like you know I like that um, and if this seems like this this seems easier to me than when I did it earlier and part of me wants to say well that's just because the three the three ds is better for making art than the Vita blah 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 and no, I don't think it's that. I think because uh, I drew it before, <laughs> um, I think that I've got more experience <laughs> now. I'm just putting this here for a little spacer on either side. So all I think I've really done is uh, I'm just spending some more time in this planning phase that I didn't spend before. Um, and let me start sketching a little bit. I'm going to look at the reference there. Um, McIntyre has some really good uh, steps, step by step of what he's doing. He explains it out loud, probably much better than I'm doing right now because I just remember. Why. But um, 
my my lines are fairly loose and fairly sketchy and fairly like and also I might at times just do this just move the move the device around a little bit and that's something you want to get in the habit of too I don't say moving the device around but if you're working on a on in a sketchbook or you're working on a piece of paper on the table feel free to move that paper around to get it to this get it to the angle that's best for you as you work So um, we get some overlap here, right? We get some overlap of this to this. And, you know, I realized, uh, I was thinking about that earlier. Why, why did he put this one out there so far back here? And the reason that I think he did that is because this one can't overlap the other ones because, like, say this is the space race, you know? These aliens are racing along to see who's going to win the race. This one that's in the back is losing. <laughs> well, no, it's further away. And so there's this, so these two are close to each other, so there's that overlap. But this one's farther away, right? So there can't be an overlap there. There could be. Visually, there could be, uh, but but he puts this space in here because this is a, a greater distance away. So um, putting it putting it higher on the page, uh, that is the element in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a layer where I label all the elements that I'm using so far. But one thing you notice here, and this is what you know, I'm sort of like I'm plugging two things, but I'm not I'm not selling either. Um, just an FYI, I don't get any anything from Bruce McIntyre other than the satisfaction of knowing that I've introduced more people to Bruce McIntyre, who's uh, I've never met, and I've never never met any of his children or the people that run the website or anything. But I think uh, his book is so great, and Walt Stanchfield, who introduced me to McIntyre, they really influenced me to become an art teacher. They did from books that they wrote years ago, and. Um, and this this program colors like I'm all zoomed in, and I'm like blah 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 blah. But notice how it shows up there. This is always showing me what the overview is, and this is uh, is showing me the kind of zoomed in detail work that I'm doing, right? So that is something to, you know, s when I'm working and I'm like down here doing this stuff, and you're like, well, wait a minute. What's that thing up there? That is the kind of final version, and down here is the detailed version, right? I'm starting to feel my body going, isn't it nap time? <laughs> because since I've been working from home and teaching from home, uh, I take a nap every day at like 3 o'clock. And naps I've learned are so cool. Check out my cool cup. Wally. Great movie. Um, I forget who got me this. I want to say it might have been Maria, my fiance. It might have been my older sister. It might have been my younger sister. <laughs> it might have been my daughter. Um, okay. So, in that, he's got two aliens. Um, oh, I was going to make a new layer. Where I, in that layer, I label all the elements of perspective being used. Um, so let's see. Let's see if you can point them out. Here, and I'm going to change the opacity here. Here, I see an element being used this to this right and pause the video and guess what it is because if you force yourself to guess you're definitely if you get it wrong you're going to remember it more but if you get it right then you're definitely going to remember it hopefully if you get it wrong you'll definitely remember that the things you get wrong you remember more than the things you get right because you remember oh man i should have got that right but anyway what's going on here this is overlap if you got it right give yourself a little pat on the back 
Now here, right here, that circle there is another principle. My head's not in the way, is it? What principle is that? Pause the video. All right, unpause it. Did you get it right? That is foreshortening. It's foreshortening. Um, this one here, I highlight that one. Why? Because that one is smaller than the other ones, right? And being smaller, as things get closer to us, they get bigger, right? This one is bigger than that one. That element is size. Size, overlap, foreshortening. I have not put in anything yet, but I'm going to, so I'm gonna label it. <laughs> in here, in the example, what's going on in here in the example? You can pause the video if you get it right. It is shading. I always tell my students, you better put some shade on that drawing before I throw some shade at it. I use that joke every class, right? Um, shading, overlap, size, foreshortening. Now, this one is closer to the bottom than this one, right? Than the other ones. So being that it's closer, oh, I see. When I change layers, the stuff that's on that layer blinks. I didn't realize that. Because it's closer, it is surface. Yes, surface. So we have surface for hurting size, overlap, shading. Uh, we haven't introduced surface lines yet, but we will. Density, we will. We haven't yet, but density will be there. We will draw this with darker and more detail than that. We'll let that one fade. And as things go away from us, it's like things go towards the horizon or in the landscape where mountains get bluer they kind of fade into the sky a little bit it's called atmospheric perspective because there's more atmosphere in between you and the thing and because there's more atmosphere the atmosphere when you look into the sky what does the atmosphere look like it looks blue right so as things go away from us they tend to get bluer lighter and bluer and they have less detail so we can use density here we can use density as that goes back, it can fade, and as it comes forward, it's going to get more detail and get darker. So we will use surface lines. We can use density. We haven't yet, but we will. Um, shading, overlap, size, foreshortening, and surface, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's all seven. Seven elements of perspective can be used in this one example. Uh, okay, so I'm going to turn that layer off or delete that layer. Actually, I can grab it like that and go to trash. Boom. I'm going to trash it. Go back down to that layer. Okay. Now I'm going to um, I'm going to lighten this whole thing up. Take my eraser tool, make it nice and big. Keep it low on low opacity. Zoom out and just come along you can see up top I can see up top what I'm doing I'm lightening the whole drawing up and maybe I especially want to lighten that up right we can even start to feel a little bit out of that uh, density as this goes back in space right um, and now I am going to go onto a layer underneath I'm using um, a bigger brush tool. I'm going to just block in some shadows. Well, actually what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna go to the lowest layer and I'm going to, I'm thinking about what color scheme I wanna use. And earlier when I was working on this example, I went for this kind of like grayish, dark gray with a slight tinge of purple because I figured it's space, right? And I'm just gonna make it kind of like a light wash of this color. And this is what I'm putting on the bottom underneath everything. Oh, I didn't mean to do that second one there. As long as I don't lift my brush up, if I start going like that, you see how it's getting darker? And actually I think I could probably I could probably just jump off right from there 
and and do the whole thing that way. Let's keep it monochromatic. Okay, I'm gonna push a little. I'm gonna do everything's gonna be in these shades of these purples. Um, all of the drawing, all of the lights. The lights are gonna be the light purples. The darks are gonna be the dark purples. Everything's coming out of these purples. Okay, and I'm just gonna block in. I'm still on that layer, that bottom layer there. All right. It's going to be kind of like my shading layer, while this layer here is going to be more of my drawing layer. Let's see, time-wise. Okay, another eight minutes. I'm going to go for a while on this. I started late. <laughs> so I'm looking at my example, and I want to get my brush. My brush. I'm keeping the opacity down so that I can make layers of shade, shade using layers. And I'm going to think about coming in here zooming in and I'm gonna start well I totally am I can go right over top of that other one because I can always um, erase so I don't I don't have to be too perfect on the um, So you notice what I did there? I sort of I created a a gradient there in a way by lifting, by making an area and then going over top of it and going over top of it and going over top of it. That's how I made it darker. Um, actually, if I hold this X button, it makes things lighter. So I'm gonna make a light, even lighter wash down here. That really kind of faded that out a bit. I can come in with the eraser tool to clean up where I've shaded. Oh. Oh. Why this won't work. Okay. Now I've sh I started to erase and it erased away the, the color of the background. <laughs> and I didn't want to do that. Um, okay. So I'm going to undo everything I've done. <laughs> Not everything. Just that this this gradient there. I'm gonna undo all that. Let the little spinny wheel go because I think this program actually records things as um, brush strokes. So it's literally like undoing that brush stroke in the history of things. It's also kind of frozen. Oh no, my my thing is. Let's see, one by one, we're getting there. It's gonna take me a minute to undo. I'm undoing because I want to make, I want to leave this this grayish purple as its own layer and work in my shadows on top of that. And the easiest way to probably do that is to do this. Do this. I'm on that right layer, right? Yes. Okay. I grab that color of the background here. I'm gonna make my brush because this is a slow go of. Yeah, okay. Now, when I work on my shadows, I'm gonna be on the layer in between that underneath layer and that drawing layer, okay? Apologize those are following along with me and had to undo or erase as well. It happens. I have a sip of my tea. I could use some more of that. Um, there we go. Let me zoom in. My shadow, I'm gonna keep the opacity down. Lower, and I'm going to, I'm gonna start, if I hold in the X button, it actually works as um, making kind of a lighter version of that brush. I think it ended up much better the <laughs> second time. All right. I come in with my eraser tool. I know I haven't drawn in my aliens yet. I'm just sort of doing the detail of the ships. I was thinking about that same guy I've been drawing for the last number of classes, like the creepy baby looking guy. Mm. 
And now I'm holding this kind of just like like this. I'm like, nya, 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 nya. Um, it actually is, I find, the best way. It's got a little curved part. You can just stick it in your hand like that. Hold it like this. It's funny, you know, I wasn't really into this as a stylus, but now that I'm holding it like this and using it, it's perfectly fine. I don't think I'm going to block in the shadows on the inside of the ship, too. Nope, didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to do that. I'm going to start with the lighter one. You know, I uh, I realize now too that I'm gonna I'm gonna be drawing in a, a, a creature here or creatures, so I don't want to. Um... Now the front here, we're gonna make. I'm gonna drop that whole thing into a shadow. Uh, I'm gonna make it even darker. Why? Because um, we're using the element of density. And as things get closer to us, they end up um, being drawn darker and uh, with more detail. Now, this the star of this show is this center one so i don't want you to dwell too much on this front one so i'm i'm pushing it a bit darker and kind of off the page a little bit i want i want you to see this alien or maybe you notice this one first and then you go to that one and then you go to that one right but also this kind of diagonal that's going on here this this mouse every time i use it I get mad at it, and it's not anything to do with the mouse. It's just this surface of this wood grain is it's late. It's an old mouse, <laughs> um, but this here, uh, this diagonal going here to here to here moves your eye through the drawing, and um, it's a good. It's a it's a diagonal. It's a good um, technique to move the person's eye through and you might even do something here where you use these kinds of stars and things to kind of think boom 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 you move your eye back out that way and then you're back down here and your eye gets kind of trapped in the loop in the drawing um, there's a a, 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 a landscape artist or an, a, I think an illustrator um, from years ago I think his name was Jack Ham H-A-M-M and you can definitely type it like ham landscape drawing book um it's a really great book on learning landscape work like i um there's lots of you know lots of books i'm going to plug here because i'm definitely someone that's kind of like maybe i even like learning things better from a book Maybe I'm learning something about my own way of learning on, on camera here. Um, but, uh, okay, I'm going to grab this color. But I think Ham's book is just great. Okay, I'm going to grab the lighter color here. You know, I, I could probably work, I could work on layers here with this. Um, I could have this on the topmost layer, this on the middle layer, and that on the bottom layer. I'm just not doing that right now. I could. I know there's like a challenge out there for people to not use any layers. Actually, I want to see real quick um, if I'm on the brightest of settings here. I think that is mildly brighter. And I'm also going to hit this to save, just to save periodically in case it dies decides to die on me um, and I'm gonna name this painting today is April 1st April Fool's Day um, dr uh, class this is number 10 
And the other cool thing about this app is this. Boom, on the top screen, we see my whole process there. And it records each one as like where the where the, the actual pathway of my brush stroke went, which I think is just great. Oh, we're going to see how I mess up, too. Wait for it. <laughs> Lock the whole thing in. Here's where I mess up. Oh, it's already gone. <laughs> I can continue. And it's just a good idea to save things periodically. I know now I am. The other thing that can happen here is um, you can turn on the 3D effects. And I don't think you can see it that well. But you could even experiment with making three-dimensional art with this. I mean, think about that. Like, the bottom layer is going to be, like, the most blurred. And, like, as you go to the top, it gets into focus, I think. It's... To me, that's so cool. <laughs> You're making 3D art. Um, okay, I was painting the, so I'm going to color, air, color drop, so why does the color picking tool, I'm gonna, and then I'm going to pick a lighter, I'm going to pick a more of a, um, a painterly brush there, there's only f four brushes if you count the eraser as a brush. Um, not the. I gotta, I gotta bump. I gotta unify this whole thing. Um, because this is actually a, you know, like a. And I think I need to be up on uh, a layer on top. Now, I could be working on my tablet, on the screen. It's easier for you to see. But um, I don't want to do that right now. No, that's not the reason why I'm not. Although, I am enjoying this. I will not lie to you. Um, I um, wanted to show these possibilities. Now, I am, I do have this other layer on top here, this drawing layer, that's kind of preventing me from getting some of this stuff going on here that I want uh, in this. So I'm going to make a layer on top. Going on here, what do I mean by that? I mean that some of the things that I'm trying to do in terms of cleaning up, see, now I can clean that up because I can paint over those lines and just be a little bit cleaner with the lines. Oh, I don't mean to, yeah. 
So this is digital painting. You know? It's digital painting a very, very simple example. Um, but you can just keep working back into things and end up with something that's just so nice. And you just keep going little by little. And uh, I might go drawing into this this one now. Maybe I will do the whole layer thing. This is going to be the topmost layer. Um, where each each layer thing and then each thing's on its own layer. Let me, let me try changing uh, styluses here. One thing I think is can be a problem. See how I'm working? I'm like hunched over things. I think that can become a problem. I may, you know, you gotta get the most as comfortable as you can. Holding this is definitely easier on my hand. I have been, uh, see normally I teach, <laughs> I'm teaching right now. Normally, you know, I spend my days teaching, not making. It's the way it goes when you're a teacher, you know? Um, unlike, I don't want to say that math teachers don't do mathematics on their own time, but when you're an arts teacher, like, you probably really like art. I mean, math, te math teachers, I'm sure, like math, but... I feel like it's a little different. Unless, of course, you're a mathematician. Now, I remember my uh, my high school algebra teacher, he called himself the Michael Jordan of math. And, um, or algebra. And he was, he was pretty good. <laughs> um, he knew it too. Uh, he was a good guy. He was a tough guy. I'm gonna. I'm doing some drawing here in this this part. I'm doing something called hatching. And I might really start moving this um, this thing around here. But um, you know, this is the closest one to the viewer, so I'm getting into some of the details here. It also, kind of looks like a basket in space. <laughs> I never thought about UFOs as being like a little a little basket. <laughs> but they kind of look that way, don't they? All right, so I got to put an alien in here. Um, but uh, you know, this this middle one here, this is the star of the show. But it, you know, I got to get around to him. Okay, I'm also kind of over our time. Um, but I want to keep working on this off off stream. It's just, you know, I have a family. I need to go up and say hello to them. I'm going to save this. But uh, if you finish this, you can send it to me. Email to me. Um, this 3DS. I love this guy. Got this. Um, I had a 2DS. If you have a 2DS, you could make this art stuff using a 2DS too. Uh, that's what I started with. But I, I wanted this because it was a little bit smaller to fit in my pocket. And uh, I got it from GameStop, refurbished. And, um, you know... Uh, and I've, you know, thought about maybe three D printing covers and making my own art there. That's something for another another class. Um, but uh, I think this is a great art tool. Your phone is a great art tool. Uh, a pencil and paper is a great art tool. Uh, you don't um, need to have a device, but you might have a device that you didn't even know about, like a three D S or a PlayStation Vita. 
um, or your cell phone that could be used for making art. And I love doing things where I start in pencil and paper and then I bring them in and work on them digitally. So that's a possibility as well. If you don't feel like I can't really draw that well on these things yet, start on pencil and paper and then bring it in and, and ink it and paint it digitally. Um, and I also love the idea of like having the ability to work in color. You might not be able to go to the store and buy paint right now. You might not be able to, you might not have any watercolor or color pencil at home, but you probably have one of these. And you can probably, you know, dr dig it out of the drawer. Maybe you need to go download the app, Colors, really good app. I don't know, there might be some other art apps for um, the 3DS and the Vita, but uh, it does cost some money. But the stuff on the phone, the Android and iOS phone, Autodesk Sketchbook, a really, really nice digital painting um, and, and art program. It's also for the computer. It doesn't cost any money. So parents out there... Um, so, uh, but also, you know, hey, mom, hey, dad, I'm going to use this to make art, you know. And a lot of times parents and guardians, grandparents, they love to see the art that you guys make. And they'll be more than happy to get you the things you need to make art. So, uh, you know, and and all of a sudden this game thing that you won't you won't put down, all of a sudden you're showing them, hey, look at the thing that I made on here. There's also animation programs on here. Um, that you can get so and that could be something we could look at doing together uh, in this class again I'm Mr. Mick uh, Brian McAndrews uh, I teach at Creative Arts in Camden New Jersey um, here's my email addresses brian.mcandrews at gmail and bmcandrews at camden.k12.nj.us if you want to join my Google Classroom uh, email me for a code if you're over 13 if you are under 13 you can have your parent email me and I'll give them a code and you can sign up and that way you can participate in a class and share your artwork that you work on with me and I can give you feedback and the other students can give you feedback so if you are home because of this whole pandemic I really hope your family is is safe and healthy and uh thanks for stopping by and i will catch you later